It's been a rather frustrating morning for me so far. I was actually planning on recording this particular video about an hour and a half or so ago, but for some reason, I booted up my computer, I turned on my audio interface. For some reason, there was a bunch of static noise in the background. So the last hour and a half, I've been trying to figure out what exactly happened, so I unplugged everything, I updated everything, I cleaned everything, put it all back together, static noise was still there. Then I changed a bunch of settings, I turned everything off, and then I turned it on again, and for some reason, I think the audio issues are gone? Fingers crossed, maybe, hopefully? Anyways, I guess I won't find out until I'm actually putting this particular video in my, you know, editing software. And I guess if there is static noise in the background, I'm never actually uploading this to YouTube, so if that's the case... Um, I'm just talking to myself. Fairly sure now that the problems have been resolved, but this day is not off to a great start. Now, I figured, what, ba uh, what better way than to sour my mood even more than with a Gold League match of Terran versus Protoss. So we find ourselves on the map Neo Humanity, and spotting right here in the bottom right corner, we have a Ronin and his opponent in the opposite corner with the red Protoss pieces. He goes by the name of Sir. Seer? Sir. Sir. Oh, Okay, we've got ourselves a cheeky little proxy on the other side of the map, uh, but in a very unoptimal way. We've got a very quick gas over there, but only mining two of it. Uh, we've got a second supply depot here before the second proxy wrecks. This is off to a terrible start, but, you know, not so much for our protos here. Protoss has decided to go for maybe a slightly delayed cyber core here, but he does have two gateways. Not something you normally do in Protoss versus Terran, but if you know your opponent is cheesing you, this should work out. Emphasis on the word should. This should work out very, very well right here for Sir. Although he will need another pylon here. Can we make another pylon, sir? That would be really, really nice. Anyways, as always, if you have an awesome game of StarCraft 2 that you would like me to cast, you can send it over to replays at loco.tv. Just attach your very best replays to, well, the email, and uh, maybe I'll be casting your game here in the future. Although oftentimes I have found that I just end up making fun of the people that sent <coughs> replays to me. So, yeah, um, <clears throat> if you don't like that, if you don't like your game being publicly shamed to, like... I don't know, upwards of like 100,000 people. Maybe, maybe, maybe don't send it over, but I would appreciate it if you, uh, you know, want me to make fun of you. <clears throat> Anyways, Zealot is going across the map. Not really where it should be going, but at the very least, we have two adepts on the back of this. It's gonna be a Marauder cheese here, which is so incredibly late. Um, I mean, there's a, a third barracks here, too. I'm not exactly sure what the third Rex is going to achieve. If we're gonna build a tech lab on that one, too. Okay, no, that one's gonna have a marine, apparently, producing. This is all gonna hit so late. Anyways, normally you want to hit with, well, uh, three marauders and quite a bit earlier than this. We do have the zealot here on the other side of the map now scouting out exactly what's going on. And, well, seeing the lack of anything but SCVs, that's kind of nice. Yeah, he's just gonna start working on whatever. Is this ever going to be cleaned up? What exactly is Ronin doing right now? Ronin decides to... <laughs> just leave. He's out of here, man. Okay, so apparently this entire main base has been abandoned. Now we're finally going to commit. There's two Adepts available, which is really not that much. Concussive Shells, of course, is done. We could shape these units backwards. Wouldn't mind seeing a shield battery or any sort of tech structure. No Robo, no Twilight, no Stargate, none of that. There could be an Oracle going right now, uh, which would be kind of funny against the Marauder Cheese, because, I mean, you could literally have an Oracle out right at this point in the game. Anyways, eventually, I do believe, though, as soon, uh, assuming Protoss just keeps warping in units, that they're going to be able to clean all of this up relatively easily. In the meantime, Zachary the Zealot over here has been slicing up whatever he can, and accidentally the boys now have been pulled. This wasn't part of the original plan. Probes were already coming in for the defense, but upon seeing all of the, well, opponent's workers, apparently he's decided, nah, that's not what we're actually going to do. Only four of them right now are sent forward to die. Yeah, it's a very sad moment right here to be a probe lover, but all of those... Yeah, just end up getting destroyed. Okay, couple sentries here. Um, I guess this means that despite the terrible start of this cheese, it did actually work out for the Terran player. Okay, we have force fields. We have force fields, but no, you had one job. You had one job, Mr. Sentry. You still have a second force field, though, so please solve your... Uh, I, mean, I guess the high ground. Yeah, yeah, he does eventually get the same. But anyways, now that there's already units on the high ground, the units from the low ground can start firing away. What an absolute disaster. Zekarito, putting in a lot of work, putting in more work than any of the other Protoss units. 
Certainly not those sentries. They should be fired right away. Probes, though, are getting kills right now. For some reason, well, I guess the reason is the Terran hasn't got any money. Yeah, they've got a little bit of cash still in the bank, but he hasn't been mining here, which explains why we haven't actually seen additional units coming out of these barracks. I mean, other than two Marines, maybe three Marines that he could have been building a little while ago, uh, the man literally did not have um, income. Okay, so where are we at right now? Um, the Orbital Command has landed over here. Most of the SCVs are gone. Only three of them remain right now, with one of them looking for a home to return its gas canister to. A little bit sad for this lad right over here. We have a scouting sentry chasing down Zachary. I'm not exactly sure if we want to be scouting with one of the flimsiest units in the game. But I guess Sir is actually in a fantastic spot right now. The problem is, does he realize it? He needs to warp in a couple units, which I think he will do. The sentry right now. <laughs> the sentry comes across the map. That's not really something we ever see. Can we warp in like two stalkers? Come on, buddy. Come on, come on. Just get like, it's like, pew pew, stalkers. Yeah, stalkers. There you go. Good. A little bit late here, but apparently the Marines decide to run away before finishing the job of killing that pylon right over there. Is my audio still fine? Hold up, I'm doing a little bit of double checking here. Yeah, looks like we're good. Okay, nice. Uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, man. Audio issues are the worst, man. Like, I, I, as a one-man production team, right, I try to simplify my setup as much as possible because I know a lot of people that also make videos and streams and all that, right? And they have like these very complicated setups with multiple PCs and a whole lot of other stuff. I mean, I could simplify my things a little bit more too, but I try to keep things at least relatively straightforward just on the off chance that things aren't working properly. Anyway, speaking of things that aren't working properly, though, those stalkers, they're not really a good segue, right? Those, st <laughs> those stalkers, they decide to run for their lives. Seven minutes. Okay, that was really ambitious. Also misplaced. Um, <laughs> uh, eventually, we do have a Stargate coming up, is what I'm trying to say. Um, he's gonna go Void Ray, right? Yeah, of course he's gonna go Void Ray. This is a Gold League match. I think an Oracle would be much better. Ah, you know, it'd be better for oracles. But anyways, uh, we're gonna go for a void, right? Because this is what happens. The probes haven't been mining here for a while because they assumed, I guess, that these terror units would just be rushing up the ramp. The mule is actually putting in a surprising amount of work because despite the fact that our Terran player has got far less workers than the Protals, 29 versus 5, he's still actually pretty competitive here as far as the income goes. Okay, now I had a cheeky look at the replay duration timer before I actually loaded up this game. And this match is close to half an hour long. What in the world? <laughs> what happens over the next 20 minutes? I have no idea. Look, we, we can put 13 probes on, on two gases, okay? That might not be ideal, but Protoss' economy here is still through the roof. Compared to the Terran. Can we get a force field? Oh my god, dude. Those... Sir, what are those force fields, man? Maybe Sir has fallen for, like, classic, like, gaming peripheral marketing team, you know? Where they're like, this computer mouse can have up to a DPI of 156,000. Guys, you don't want to be playing at a very high mouse DPI, okay? Because more likely than not, maybe... At least, I'm assuming most of you are human, right? And as a human, we have these, like, hands that do the majority of our computer inputs, right? And because we can't be precise to anything smaller than, like... I mean, it's very difficult to be incredibly precise on incredibly high DPI. I actually think a lot of players play StarCraft 2 at much too high a DPI. If you want my advice, I think it should be below about 1,200. Most of the pros seem to play between about... I want to say, like, probably, like, right around 800 DPI. At least all of the pros that I've asked, the majority have no idea what DPI they play at. But the majority of the pros uh, that I've asked that did know, they play at a DPI of 800, which, for those of you unfamiliar, basically determines how far you need to move. Like, the correspondence between how much you need to move your mouse and how much the cursor changes on the screen. Does that make any sense? I feel like I made that way more complex than it absolutely needs to be. Anyways, uh, I've got a feeling here. The reason why I bring it up is th that Sir has got a mouse that, like, he, he moves half a centimeter in real life and it flies across the screen. You know what I mean? So he can't actually hit a force field. At least we have confirmation that he's a human, though, because a robot would have done a much better job there. 
Anyhow, um, we've got Mass Void Ray coming up right now. Yeah. Starport here as well. Now, coming available. Has he ever figured out, by the way, where all of this is coming from? No. He scouted quite a few locations around the map, but he did not actually go all the way up north. He did, of course, see that his opponent, well, left. Right? He saw the SCVs on the other side of the map. Okay, we're gonna just try and sneak out another expansion here, I guess. We do definitely want to position our units, though, to be able to defend this. Now, while Void Rays aren't amazing, they are really good as, like, a jack-of-all-trades type of unit, right? So, like, you should be able to just send all of this army over here and then kill everything. Whatever the Terran's throwing at you. Until Stimpak, Combat Shields, maybe plus one is done, the Marines are gonna get shredded. So, in this particular instance, I actually don't mind the, f well, Void Ray. Yeah. Normally, I think you're better off avoiding the Void Ray, but... In this case, you can void the Void Ray, I guess. Uh, that's all I got. Anyways, Zachary, no! Zachary, no! Z Zachary, no! Pay your respects to Zachary in the comment section right now. I'll be pausing the game. Yeah? Did you, did you do it? Okay. Good. Thank you. Poor Zachary, man. That dude put in more work than the entirety of, well, all the centuries combined, at the very least. That wasn't, you know, in, in, in the centuries' defense, that wasn't a particularly... Oh god, that might be blocking the Nexus. Uh, This gives me anxiety, dude, whenever Protoss players do this. I wonder if that's blocking the Nexus. It might just barely not. Yes, it does. Okay, I was gonna say. Yeah, okay. Yeah, please just build it. Okay, there you go. 11 and a half minutes in, we need a base. Because, you know, despite the fact that we are heavily oversaturating the gases here since the very start, we're now also heavily oversaturating the mineral line. Void rays here, making their beams extra thick. Nothing quite like a thick void ray beam. Is he gonna cancel that, you think? Nah, of course not. <laughs> That's a Gold League special, actually. So, the Prismatic Alignment ability can be activated, and it deals bonus damage to armor. So, armor things uh, take additional damage. So, that's great on a bunch of stuff, right? Not on Marines, not on a whole lot of things, but, you know, it's also Intimidation, I suppose. The downside of activating that ability is that your unit gets slowed down quite a bit. And if you, well, are flying away, you probably want to cancel the ability, which is something you have a hotkey for, but... I guess that's also something a lot of Protoss players aren't really necessarily paying attention to at this level. So... Ronan has decided to make a new base in the bottom left hand corner of the map. Yeah. So he's now taking the top right as well as the bottom left. I've got a feeling that... Oh god, Void Race? I've got a feeling that Sir is just a very careful person. I don't think he really wants to be taking a lot of chances. That's another Void Ray going down. Yeah, Sur is very much so your quintessential turtle protos, right? The guy who's found out one day, Hey, my opponent absolutely destroyed me with a Skytos army. I'm gonna go ahead and do that in literally every single one of my games. I guess we should be glad, though, that Sir hasn't yet met the infamous Cannon Rusher. There's a lot of um, inspirational Cannon Rushes on the ladder, okay, where... Not only do they execute a build order that is very dirty and very hard to stop, they also inspire a younger generation to do their own cannon rushes, right? I mean, that's where the majority of these strategies come from that we see all the time. People dying to a certain build and then deciding, you know what? Ooh, that's what I'm going to do. Actually, I think that happens a lot. Those people, by the way, um, especially the guys at the lower end of the ladder, they're having way more fun than I do when I'm playing ladder. I get very frustrated when I play ladder. I get very tilted. I remember the early days of StarCraft, I'd be playing some random on the ladder, right? I'd be queuing up a game as Terran or whatever, and then I lose to a strategy from Protoss, and I'm like, oh my god, that's it! Now I'm a Protoss main! And then I lose to a strategy from Zerk, and I'm like, oh my god, now I'm gonna be maining Zerk! And that circle basically continues uh, up until a certain point where you're actually trying to get better, and then you realize, okay, I probably should be paying attention to just a single race and only three of the matchups. Either way, I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is double tap my plus button here. Because these guys are doing a whole lot of nothing. We are now at times four speed. My god, yeah, look. This guy is a cannon, cannon, well, cannon void right connoisseur. I guess that is the majority of the Protoss players, though, on the ladder. 
Oh, that is a big Stimpak. Love the fact that the Marauders were stimped as well. <laughs> he would have stimped the Widow Mines if he could. Oh, Sentries joining in the fray as well. Do you think they're going to activate Guardian Shield? Guardian Shield is amazing because it reduces incoming damage by a lot. But probably not, right? Okay, Terran's slowly pushing this forward. He's just adding on so much production. You know what? I actually don't mind it. He's got... He's actually only got four barracks over here. Yeah, he doesn't actually even have that many. I honestly don't mind it, though. One of the problems we see all the time at this level of play is that players just have too much money in the bank. And obviously, one advantage in this particular game is that neither player really has a whole lot of income in the first place. But they are doing an excellent job keeping their money down. Right, and honestly, that is something that needs to be mentioned. There are a lot of games that I have casted over the years where we're 16 minutes in and both players are sitting at 10,000 resources at a lot higher of an MMR too. Okay, we're making the beam extra thick against the Marines. This is just for the intimidation and for the fact that we now have a harder time to disengage. The sentries, uh, yeah, will get blasted here by those Widow Mines, but I think in the end, Protoss will just have enough stuff, no? Yeah. Yeah, he'll end up with enough stuff. He needs some sort of detection, though. Yeah, if he could kill up, uh, or if he could just shut down all of these Widow Mines, that would be amazing. Vikings coming up right now. I think actually just Medivacs and Marines would do the trick against this sort of army, but... I guess Vikings, you know, at least it makes sense. Do you think Protoss is gonna try and capitalize on this advantage of his? Probably not, right? Speed up it is! We have the shields upgrade coming. We've got the plus one arrow weapons coming as well. We've got Terran at the very least treating the entire map as his canvas. And I do appreciate that. This base is running out. We're going to try and take another base over here. Apparently, we did have those Void Rays once again taking a beating. Oh my god. No way, dude. <laughs> those Widow Mines are actually so nice. Yeah, in the end, Marines and Metafix. They're very good. They're very strong. Plus two Marines as well. Ronin, I do want to give you credit right there for getting those upgrades done. Lovely work. That is a whole lot of static defense over here. I wouldn't mind seeing a battery overcharge, but that's probably... Oh, there we go. I was going to say, that's probably an ability he hasn't found about uh, yet, but he did start it up. Okay. Well, that was a bit of a meat grinder there. Without any Marauders in the front to tank, it's very difficult to get much done. But in the end, this is a Protoss player who's actually running out of juice. Yeah, he really needs another base. So either he expends over here or he expends over here. I think those are the only likely choices. But it doesn't really seem like Sir has got much of a killer instinct here. Yeah, because even when he was ahead, he just sort of let it slip through his fingers, right? Rather than committing, he decided, oh, we're going into immortal production too. I don't know if I like that all too much. Anyways, rather than committing when he was ahead, he decides, you know what? Nah, I'm going to go ahead and just sit back and try to max out here eventually, which is difficult to do on two bases when one of your two bases has already run out of juice. Okay, so he's going to need another base. He's going to need another base here before too long. Now, one problem here that Ronin could certainly run into is all of these photon cannons, right? So if he decides to stim in once again... There's definitely a chance that Protoss is going to have a landslide victory. I would not mind that at all. Okay. Terran coming in from the site right now. This is not a bad engagement, though. Prismatic alignment once again activated, which I just want to emphasize does absolutely nothing. It just makes it difficult here for the Protoss player to chase this army and to disengage with his Void Race. Now with the Static Defense gone, though, yeah, with all the Static Defense out of the picture... That Protoss army just gets destroyed. Luckily for him, he does back up. But at this point, Terran is just starting to really outgrow our Protoss player. And I've got a feeling that this will likely be the ending of this particular game as well. I mean, Protoss has just not got enough income anymore. If you look right here at the amount of income, considering Ronin had no money. He had like, what was it? Like five workers remaining? Considering he had no income, he's been doing an excellent job getting back into the game. There's a lot more bases he could be acquiring. He could even consider going back home, you know? This is where it all started. I don't really know if Terra units get nostalgic, but I ter yeah, I personally do. Going, going back home every once in a while is certainly nice. He can take any base he likes, but apparently this is the new land. The promised land that he 
well, at least promised to those uh, ancestors of the SCVs. I'm making the assumption here that many of the OGs have died, but... Yeah, Sir does not really have a plan. His entire plan was to cross his fingers and hope the opponent messes up enough. Which is a good plan if your name is Cyril. But if you, uh, yeah, are not, uh, yeah, not great. So I've got a feeling here, what we're gonna see is Terran stimming up this ramp and winning the game. There are a couple more force fields coming up. Do you think these will be positioned properly? Liberators as well, by the way, which is an interesting choice, because there's still void ray production. Okay, force fields. I believe in force fields. Come on, sir. We've had a little bit of practice now. We've had a little bit of practice. Come on. As soon as Terran runs up, he's, he's gonna run up. Terran can't, can't resist this. Terran cannot resist this bait. Can he? Yeah, no, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Force fields! Ooh. Close, close, close. Sir, had him selected. He was ready. He's decided to smash his piggy bank, by the way, and go into a robo bay, which is becoming awfully expensive. Sentries! Sentries! Come on, I believe, man, you can make up for the sentry problem. Again, marines are not armored units, so prismatic alignment does nothing. Okay, well, that's an ambitious sentry. We still have one more. Sentry! Go, 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 go! Oh, God, that marine stim is not ideal. Okay, we're just not using any of the sentry energy at all. As a matter of fact, we're just uh, activating prismatic alignment and then looking at the pretty pictures, which I am not convinced is the greatest strategy right here for Protoss. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I also don't think that clumping all your marines against one another is quite ideal. Eventually, we do stutter step them forward a little bit, but at this point, sir, is, well, running out of army. He's running out of minerals, he's running out of supply, he still has a bunch of photon cannons, which are real scary, especially when you're taking your marines on a little walk around. But in the end, this can only be a Terran win. So cool game right there by Ronin. Despite the fact that his early game was pretty atrocious and that Marauder Cheese of his hit like literally a minute and a half later than it should have. Like he hit around the time that an Oracle can be out. <laughs> Anyways, it is going to be a Ronin victory. Well played. Good news, everyone. I figured before I do another full recording and well, the audio is completely uh, cursed. Good news, everyone. Apparently, I'm Professor Putricide. Um, apparently, the audio is fine. I just loaded it into my editing software and everything seems to be okay. So, fingers crossed that it indeed turns out to be all right. But yeah, I'm not just talking to myself in a room. Apparently, I will be actually publishing this to the internet. Isn't that amazing? Okay, our second game for today is going to be a Terran versus Zerk, where our Zerk went... Pool first into double gas. I have, There's no Roach Warren or anything like that. Our Terran player... Okay, opening up with what seems to be a little bit more of a normal strategy. So first off, in the bottom right -hand corner of Gresven, playing with the Red Zerg drones, and currently in Gold League, we have Zergon, and his opponent in the opposite corner with the Blue Terran SCVs, our Silver League hero. We're looking inside of the main base of Kraken. Alrighty, Kraken versus Zergon. Really? Um, Zergon is rushing out of Bailing Nest. The problem with rushing out of Bailing Nest is that you do actually need, um, Zerglings. <laughs> this may sound very obvious, but off of a single hatchery, you can't really produce that many Zerglings. Especially if the Queen decides to go on a little march. Not sure where she's going. There will be a second base here eventually, but if you want to go for a Bailing Bust of some sort, this is going to be completely out of whack. Maybe though what happened right here- Oh my god, he just went lair. Okay, hold up. Pool, double gas, bailing nest first, link speed, natural expansion, lair. That's what we're playing here. Second bit of energy right here on the queen is gonna, yeah, is gonna go into a tumor. Okay. Uh, that is, in case you're wondering, not a very good build order. Nope, I don't think it's gonna be ideal. Anyways, in the meantime, on the other side of the map, oh, I actually thought that that was a factory that we saw producing there earlier, but no, it's a double barracks into a factory here eventually, so I guess the man wants to be going into some siege tanks. Starport coming up here as well. Uh, this does not strike me as a game where either player decides to be overly aggressive. So there are links coming out right now. <laughs> Don't tell me you're gonna do a bailing bust with eight Zerklings. Because you're gonna need at least five bailings, and at that point, anything you will ever do is gonna be pointless. 
I mean, you know, not in your personal life or whatever, but I mean specifically with this bailing bust. I'm not saying, I want, I, I don't want to be that toxic, okay? I don't want to say that everything you're going to do in life is going to be pointless. Um, although I guess, you know, for basically all of us, myself included, yeah, that may very well be the case. But anyways, night is worm right now too. What in the world are we doing? Don't morph in bailings. Please, whatever you do, do not morph in bailings. Thank you. I appreciate that. Fusion Core in the meantime, by the way, inside of the main base right here, off our... Oh my god, he's morphing in Bane Links. God, no. Oh. Fusion Core coming up. Um, he may just see it. Uh, yeah, he quite literally just sees it. <laughs> Kraken's like, wait a second, what? Oh, stutter step, stutter step. Woo! Micro God Kraken. You love to see it. Okay, so we're doing a Marine single tank push into a fusion core on the back of this. Now, notice the distinct lack of a second command center or anything along those lines. Overlord moving forward right now. Yeah, that's because of that Nidus worm that he's had for a little bit. Marines and a siege tank are gonna go across the map. We're gonna put like six Zerk... No, about 20... No, about 12 Zerklings uh, inside of the worm. SCVs, though, are gonna surround it. Unload, 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 unload... Okay. You don't have to wait until the animation's done. You can unload. <laughs> Maybe he thought he needed to wait. Second night is worm right now out front. But here's the problem, though. There are no units available here for our Terran player or, yeah, to be to be pushed back. Oh, we accidentally put... What? What did you just do? I thought that was an accident, but there's no way. You just box everything and then right-click on accident, right? Maybe this is another high DPI user. That is certainly a possibility, but I certainly hope that's not the case. Okay. So, that Knight is Worm out front also got very little done. Banshee first, by the way, out of a starport with a tech lab that has a fusion core right next to it. Cheeky little overlord still going around. We're gonna pop down another one, aren't we? Zergon, come on. Pop down another one. Oh, he decides to pop it down over here. Burrowed Bailinx! That was kind of cute. That one Zergling. Uh, okay. Well, if the tank wasn't unseaged. It would have finished the job, but apparently the tank is going to be driving backwards, but it will be driving back home. Okay. Nidus Worm did pop up on the other side of the map, but so far it's not really achieved anything. Man, this is definitely one of those games, though, where both of these guys are playing the most epic games of their life, right? Like, this is... This is as epic as, like, high silver, low gold level games really get. Like, there's so much action all over the map. I mean, maybe the first few minutes were a bit slow, but this does not seem as a game that's gonna slow down right now. And neither player is really winning this either. Okay, we got a Nidus Worm over there in the main base of the Terran. Still no uh, Battlecruiser though. I feel like a Battlecruiser would be amazing. SCVs are gonna be pulled again at the latest possible moment. There's currently nothing inside of the Worms anyway. We're gonna pull the boys and the queens right here to try and clean out those siege tanks. And I think that actually may very well be efficient. The queens are taking some shots. Benchy over here is going to be able to kill all of this. Eventually, the tanks did get destroyed, and so did the Nidus Worm inside of the main base of the Terran. Cloaking field, by the way, coming up. We're going to put another worm in the exact same spot. This time around, there will be <laughs> Zerklings inside of it. Kraken was ready, man. Kraken has now been conditioned to think that pulling SCVs against the Nidus Worm is a great choice. Um, he's going to be punished for it now. Yeah, finally, he's going to be punished for it. This man was baited into a false sense of security, man. This is Puffluff's Terran over here. As soon as he sees a, a Nidus Worm, he pulls the voice. <laughs> and he thinks it's supposed to be like that. Okay, he just lost everything. Never mind, I thought this game wouldn't be over for a long while, but uh, hey, there's a battle cruiser coming. Give it about another minute. Burrow here, unburrowed once again too. Benchy is gonna come home. Activate cloaking, dude. You researched it, may as well. <laughs> <laughs> Not that these Zorklings are gonna shoot up. Maybe they can stand on each other's shoulders and somehow, some way, bite that Benchy out of the air. Knight is worm, by the way, blocking the, the expansion here, which is kind of cute. Or not the expansion, the command center. There has not been an expansion in this game. Okay. Battle Cruiser Operational. This is actually real scary. Kraken, you should teleport its trade across the map. Go, 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 go. Look at the panic force. 
<laughs> oh no. The man just built six, seven, seven spore crawlers. Go! I'm fairly sure you can put your planetary, or your planetary, your, your, uh, what's it called? Battle cruiser right over here and it would still be out of range of everything. Anyways, burrowed zorklings over here being a nuisance. Orbital Command had to land over there just to get some, uh, well, scans available, and it is going to be able to land here eventually once again. I think Kraken should have teleported this across the map, and honestly, just forcing out seven spore crawlers against a single base zerg is already more than enough damage. Okay, so now what? Uh, Terran's at two SCVs, Zerk is still at 12. He's making seven more, but he doesn't have an expansion. Okay, he's taking this base, didn't work. He's taking that base, didn't work. What about this one? Yeah, it was definitely the position of the... Oh, what, what about... Uh, okay, I don't know where we're going. Oh, we're going over here. It was definitely the position of the bases that was the problem, right? <laughs> right? Okay, more Zorklings. Yeah, it turns out the mules are still pretty helpful, though. Where did that planetary, uh, flying planetary go? For some reason, I keep calling battlecruisers planetaries lately. I don't know why. I had that problem when I, well, first started casting for, like, the first five years of me casting games of StarCraft 2. I would call Immortals Marauders and Marauders Immortals and vice versa. I don't know. It's, it's very annoying. Uh, for some reason, sometimes those things get stuck in my head. Anyways, the one base tech monster continues being a tech monster. Now the battle cruiser comes in. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> burrow. <dr> <laughs> By the way, apparently these burrow drones, they're kind of like uh, they're kind of like sharks, dude. They think they are being very stealthy there, but you can kind of see them. Queen's over here at the same time too. Burrow, 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 burrow. Hey, there you go. Love to see it. Mule over here, by the way, as well, to try and defend this. I'm glad that Zergon did not decide to make Hydras, but... Okay. Is he ever going to make an expansion here, though? That Mule did get killed. The drones are back to mining. Terran is still just on the single command center, and four workers here in total, with two of them uh, on a little adventure, apparently. I don't know where they went, but doesn't really matter. We have 300 minerals, Zergon. I think this is the moment. You are the chosen one. No? Well, I think you are the chosen one. But this would be the time. We already have a Nidus Worm right next to it too, to reinforce this if we want to. With drones, that is. Anyways. Yeah, there's the hatchery. Oh. <laughs> he put it over here. Then what are you doing there, man? Anyways, Battle Cruiser decides to jump back home because there's three Zorklings. Okay, more like six Zorklings, and they did scare off the boys. Look at them. Absolutely terrified. Okay. 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 Now, despite the fact that Kraken has had no income here for a very long time, he still has managed to stack up nearly 400 minerals. And you know what? I wouldn't mind seeing maybe a second command center. If we're not going to lose the game in the next few minutes, a second orbital command is always going to be worthwhile. We could also spend our money by queuing up a load of units. Not my preferred choice, but... Anyways, the drone over here is burrowed once again with its little shark fin right above the surface. It's even got five minerals in its hands. But the Banshee pilots are blind. Yeah, they can't see anything. I mean, they may be wearing those cool goggles of theirs, right? But they've got some cool paint right over here at the front of their, uh, their planes as well, but... Eh, planes, helicopters, a little bit of both. We have some Burrowed Banes over here, but no defense right now against the Battlecruiser. Luckily, we have about 17 Spore Crawlers in the main base. Once again, we're going to burrow everything. Oh, God. Uh, I actually like this position for Kraken a little bit more right now than the Zerg, interestingly enough. I feel like Kraken was super dead, but there's not really been a counter. For, like, we can make one Corruptor right now. One Corruptor is not going to do anything, though, against this Battle Cruiser. She's going to win the fight easy. Okay, two Corruptors. Um, yeah, two Corruptors is a little more scary, but I still think that the Battle Cruiser would win. Because they're going to spawn individually from one another. So I think we're going to have one and then the other. Another Nidus Worm in the main base. Fair enough. Corruptor is going to show its ugly head right now, though. Yeah. Okay. Cloak gets activated. Battlecruiser goes back home. 
Nidus Worm in the main base, but Zerk is dead broke right now. He's got very little. Yeah, he wants to put units in and send them across, but the four Marines are going to be able to stop this one pretty easily. Okay, so Zerk's still on one base, 13 minutes in. How in the world are we going to play this out right now? Um, I am honestly not sure. <laughs> He's spending so much money on Nidus Worm, so at this point 12 of them have already been knocked down. Sure, he did kill quite a few SCVs, I suppose, but he's made about as many worms as, well, he's killed SCVs. And this is starting to be pricey. It's 75 minerals, 75 gas each. That's where he's spending his cash. He doesn't have a lot of it, though. He's got three Corruptors looking for a Battlecruiser that he knows is inside of the main base right now. Battlecruiser, by the way, never got repaired back up. Wouldn't mind seeing that, to be honest. Okay, here comes Zergon. He's got a target. He knows the battle cruiser is out there somewhere. This would be the time for him to shine. There are some Marines available though. Can we please get a repair going on the battle cruiser? That would make me very happy, Kraken. Kraken, come on. Kraken, Kraken. No, not 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 the barracks. Okay, caustic spray over here. Very ambitious. There are some bailings popping out. <laughs> Oh no, he just fell on failings in the mineral line. There's no way that... Okay, that Terran didn't see that. And he actually kills the command center. Now, luckily for us, luckily for Kraken, his micro and his macro have not been that great. So he actually has enough money in the bank to start up another command center. Yeah, he's already got one done over here in the natural two that for some reason I missed entirely. But I, I wouldn't mind seeing maybe another one coming up, man. I don't think it would be a... Uh, a bad call. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that's the move. SCVs for some reason on a little filter repair, but I guess they were just trying their very best to repair whatever they can and to provide whatever support is possible. Kraken's economy here should still be much bigger. Zerk does have 17 workers here in total. Maybe we should send some of them over there. Here comes the Terran once again, though. Some uh, changelings here, preventing... <laughs> Kraken's like, yeah, my army's massive! Turns out half the units in his army are changelings. Okay, a bit of an exaggeration there, but... As long as the marines are here, the corruptors can't really engage. And even though the battlecruiser never got repaired back up... Oh, he's actually got quite a few of the corruptors right now. Eh, he should be able to get the kill on that one. Oh no, the marines are gonna march all the way back. Council has already been done, though. Oh no, this hatchery is actually gonna yeah, it's actually gonna live. Okay, mineral field in the main base is running out though. Only 10 minerals right now remain. And that's gonna be the end of that. Caustic spray here in the natural. Another Nidus worm here pops up as well. Marines running all the way back home. Battlecruiser may actually die here. Battlecruiser may actually die here because it never got it repaired. Oh no. A Thor has started up. Apparently, after the hero uh, battle... Oh, <laughs> failings! After the hero uh, battle cruiser, it's now the time for our hero, Thor. I love bailings, by the way, running into these units from a Nidus Worm. That's so funny. He can actually do it over here again as well. Those SCVs might be in trouble. If your rally's right over here, I think there's a chance. Oh my god, bailings, 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 bailings! Oh, he could have popped them out! He could have popped them out! He could have killed all those SCVs! Okay. So, um, now what? Yeah, the drones have been repositioned right over here on the low ground. Caustic Spray is going to be activated now on the starport, and the Thor here is actually getting in quite a few good kills. I guess that's a distraction night is over here. Yeah, eventually the starport will die. Okay. Zerk has smashed his piggy bank and he produced eight additional lings. Having a Nidus Worm over here or just running the Zerklings across the map would probably be your easiest bet at this point because it's getting kind of pricey. 18. <laughs> 18 Nidus Worms have been used so far in this particular game and apparently much like the Battlecruiser, Kraken now is also done dealing with the Corruptors. After seeing a ring of spore crawlers from his opponent, he decides to make a ring of missile turrets. 
Okay. Normally when we see uh, in Silver League in Engineering Bay, it is meant for, well, planetaries, right? But in this particular case, it's going to be for the missile turret ring here instead. Okay. This is actually such an action-packed game. I haven't needed to fast forward a single time yet, which is really kind of impressive from both of these guys. I've seen quite a few Silver League games, man. People sent me a replay, they label it as something like, Oh my god, this is the most epic game I've ever seen! And then it's two guys doing a whole lot of nothing for like 20 minutes. Maybe it feels like the most epic game they've ever played, but this is actually really sick. Bailings trying to get a kill right here, but good control right there by Kraken. He does run them in the right direction. And I think a few SCVs ended up going down, maybe more than a few, but really not a super significant amount. Another Nidus Worm goes up in the main base. This is Nidus Worm Lamb under uh, number 20, actually. Yeah, this is a 20th one. 19 plus 1 is 20, guys. You're welcome. Zorklings are popping in. And they should be popping out. There they go. All right, Terran has decided that apparently we're gonna let this one slide for once. We'll deal with this with the reinforcements and instead we're gonna counter attack right now with the army that we've got. We are on a tech move, so that's nice. Both players are on a tech move, but the Zerklings are definitely not going to win that. They are, however, winning the fight over here inside of the main base and that's that factory now gone. Another Nidus Worm over here. Terran did sneak out a command center in the bottom left hand corner of the map. Caustic spray on a fusion core. Drones once again burrowed here. This has got to be the most epic silver gold league game ever. This is actually like... These guys are playing pretty freaking fast. Yeah, look at the APMs here as well. Wow, I'm actually impressed. 173 right here from our Zerg. He was definitely gold on the loading screen. But if you would have told me that both of these guys were like... Yeah, high platinum, I probably would have believed you. Like, these guys are on point. Keep in mind that in these chaotic games... StarCraft 2 becomes very complex. So a lot of players are pretty good in standard, normal games, and they can actually, yeah, macro and micro decently well. But as soon as games get a little bit crazy, that's usually where stuff really gets, well, difficult, right? That's why it's so impressive whatever the pro players are in these very strange situations that they've never been in before. And they, yeah, just micro and macro like absolute champs. These guys are doing an excellent job as well. Maybe not quite several levels of good, but, you know. For the standard that I've seen, man, this is uh, excellent gameplay by the both of them. Look at that skin, by the way. It's like a pelican uh, nidus worm. Or was it called? Spine crawler. Pelican crawler. Anyways, got a very long nose. <laughs> a very long beak. Um, Zork has got drones over here right now in the bottom left hand corner as well. That's because the main and the natural apparently have been abandoned. Accidentally, these two have become next door neighbors. This is something that Kraken may have picked up on because he has seen the creep, but that's really about it. Banelings over here now inside of the main base. I'm not exactly sure what these are going to try and achieve, but... Look at that. That is one weird looking spine crawler. Very curious skin. Anyways, Kraken's gonna go for a planetary down south. And you know what? Normally I'd be shouting, but I actually don't mind it here. <laughs> Veilings are hunting for all the SCVs. SCVs are trying to go back south. I guess the idea is that they can find safety and refuge over here at the command center? Okay. Well, by the time that the Veilings now would arrive, I do think the planetary is done. Uh, it's gonna be close. Kraken will see them right now. Yeah, no, he's gonna kill them. Nicely done. Okay, so Zorgon now has scouted the planetary. The hero Thor and the marines on the other side of the map getting kill after kill after kill. Well, not the marines anymore because they're dead, but the Zerg's natural, speaking of which, also super dead. We're gonna apparently abandon the main base now and go into a... Well, a new main right over here. Kraken's thinking about... Ooh, landing an orbital in this spot. Not going to happen, however. This is the old main command center. Well, actually, no. That's the, that one got killed. This is the uh, the natural expansion. He has got 200 minerals here. Or 200 energy. Apparently... Oh, really? We're landing all four mules over here? This is not a MOBA, Kraken! 
We don't care about singular units that much. My god, he just wasted, like, 700 minerals worth of mules. I mean, that, okay. One mule would have done the job just fine, by the way. I think one mule would have been excessive, if I'm being perfectly honest. Yeah, now it's still gonna go down. Ay, 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 ay. That was a proper Silver League decision right there. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna call him out on it. That was a proper Silver League decision. Okay, so where are we at now? The uh, beaked spine crawler still going to town inside of the main base of the Terran. Love the fact, by the way, that he made a spine crawler inside of his opponent's main base after Nidus Worm number 25 finally was successful. New command center coming up here as well. Kraken just rebuilding whatever he needs, wherever he needs it. Imagine if he would have made a second battle cruiser right at the start of this game. <laughs> this game would have been over a very long time ago. Anyways, our new factory has been fired up because at this point he can't even afford a starport. Okay. How are we gonna do this? Zorgon is gonna see right now that there's a new CC coming up. And he's gonna see all of the infrastructure here down south. Or at least some of it. Spinecrawler here from the high ground as well. Another pelican, bro. Fusion core is gonna get killed here eventually. <laughs> via spinecrawler. <laughs> Okay, that's the first time I've seen a spine crawler kill a fusion core, I'm pretty sure. There's a lot of weird things that need to happen for that to be the case. Kraken has really doubled down though on the production, man. Uh, that's a lot of banelings, by the way. Some of them will be leading the charge. Nah, no, there's no way. You're gonna need to send more if you want to get in. That planetary, ooh, is gonna get a lot of work done. Kraken though may be invited to the high ground here. But Burrowed Bane Links are gonna be waiting here for him as well. Links just killing whatever they can. And eventually I do believe that this Terran is just gonna abandon the top left and corner of this map entirely. He could have just landed this orbital there by the way, or we could be using it to make SCVs. We have a lot of options. Anyways, Zerg getting a little impatient, trying to go around, go around the back right now with the Bane Link run by. Well, I was gonna say a run by, it's more like a walk by here. So very little running involved. Still very effective. 44 SCVs have, have been killed. I didn't even realize that Kraken made that many SCVs this game. I feel like he made like five. Okay. Maybe this is uh, the unit, the Mill Carrick over here that that spine crawler has been uh, modeled after. Beautiful stuff. Okay. So what are we gonna do now? I feel like neither player really has ever had a significant economy, right? It's kind of amazing. Still, though, none of these traits are particularly cost-efficient either. <laughs> what? There's no way that's going to work, right? He's just gonna unburrow them and walk them in, I think. That's probably the plan. Marines thinking about going across. There's really not that much defending the main base, right? As in literally nothing. I don't mind the idea. If Zork is gonna be forced to remake everything over here, which I guess he's already sort of done, his beloved Nidus network is gonna go down, though. Actually, I think it may have already gotten killed. Yeah. Okay. Very brave SCV here has been tasked with going... Okay. After uh, the, the Binglings itself. A couple Hellions here trying their best as well. All of these traits are kind of nice, I suppose, but they're getting very pricey. It's not like Zork has got a lot of cash here to work with. This is the lowest eco game that goes to the half hour mark, man. Insane. This is a properly beautiful game. I appreciate this one a lot. Yep. Zerk has actually gotten faster still. Interesting. I guess what I like here is that like this there's some some actual good strategy, right? Like there's some actual Strategic thinking going on here and and players actually following with the ideas that they have had in mind And like on paper running banelings into a planetary fortress mineral line is not easy. Did he just kill the little I don't know what that was But yeah, he's not just taking that for granted. He's like yeah, but what if I run them around the site, right? Like there's actual 
strategic thinking going on, which again, may not be super complex, but it's still really cool to see, especially in a chaotic game like this. Zorgon has done a much better job spending his money, but how in the world is he ever going to break this position? I think what Terran really needs to focus on is just get that money back up. Just get the money back up, get a lot of income, and then spend all of it. I mean, preferably all at the same time. So we got some bunkers building here. I think what we should really just do is produce out of these barracks. There's still a bird bailing over here trying to be annoying. But I think the... Oh, good scan as well. He actually gets rid of it. I think the main base of the Zerg player is now gone. That may be the end for the Banelings. Roaches and Zerglings, and well, maybe a spine crawler or two are going to be the only options here for the Zerg very soon. Okay. Terra needs to really get down on the resources count, though, because they've got, yeah, so much... He, he stopped macroing here for a while. This may actually just be some fatigue, right? Where this game is actually exhausting. They've been going at it for 29 minutes. And he stopped producing pretty much entirely. Zerg's still trying to make the best of this scenario, but I've got a feeling that he is slowly bleeding out. He's doing a good job right here spending his money compared to the Terran, but... He's taking some very cost inefficient trades. Zerklings are gonna be nice, I guess, at dealing with the siege tank here, but there's a big group of Marines. They don't have Stimpak, they don't have combat shields, they don't have plus one, they've got very little going on for themselves here, but... Anyways, the Siege Tank is probably going to get killed, but nice Widowmind positioning over here in front. Love to see that. And now the Marines have shown up. Okay. With the main base gone, and this new base here at the bottom of the map getting destroyed, I've got a feeling that we are watching the final moments of this particular game. The Roaches have shown up now. So there's the spine crawler in the main still being annoying. But Terran is producing once again. He's got a base over there as well that's also a planetary fortress, and there's just nothing Zorgon can really do to deny the planetary. He can kill this Hellion over here? Ah, maybe I'm mistaken. He's got a new base coming up up north. He's gonna go for lair number two. Maybe I'm making the assumption that this game is over, but it may very well not be the case. Both workers, or, or both players rather, still at basically the same worker count, basically the same supply count. Uh, it's just that Terran really should be heavily outproducing Zerk at this moment in the game. More siege tanks coming up. We really just need to produce out of these freaking barracks, man. I don't know why we aren't. Okay, the roaches are gonna try and see if they can get the jump on this, and maybe they will. But quite a few of these roaches are gonna go down, if not all of them. Still, I say that. Yeah, Burrow is still available too. Terran still has a lot of money in the bank. I think if he would have had like 10 more Marines here, this army would have died before it could ever get a, a burrow done, but... Hatchery in the top left hand corner, or the top right hand corner rather, is currently done. We still have a couple creep tumors here available, but that's about it. Bailing nest number two starts up. Really uh, a building that you normally need quite a bit of economy for. Are we gonna scan? Maybe Kraken assumes at this point that the opponent has got a, uh... He doesn't have a lot of energy. Now he's got enough energy for a scan. Okay, yeah, he will use it. Maybe he assumes that Tunneling Claws is done for the Zerg. Not quite the case, though. Okay, yeah, this is this is what I was concerned for when I first saw this, this replay timer. I'm like, okay, this is a long game. There's gotta be someone here who's gonna start stacking up a lot of minerals and, and gas and... Apparently it is Kraken here. He's just not been producing. He's just not been producing very effectively at all. Um, queuing up might not be ideal. Anyway, Zerk is just gonna leave. Zerk is gonna give up this position as well. And I think he's gonna be mining up north if he gets the chance. Lair number two is gonna go down. Well, at least if he decides to target it. There's the tunneling claws, by the way. So Zergon was thinking the same thing. Another siege tank. What are we doing with all these... We have a tech lab right over there, mate. But you just made it already. Okay. I guess he just wants to go mass siege tank for some reason. Which is good enough. Honestly, anything at this point is good enough. Even Reapers would do the trick. Zerk trying his very best to move forward. And he will. But in the meantime, they are mostly just a distraction for this base in the top right hand corner to get started. 
Zorgon, literally no money. Well, he had no minerals there, at least for a little bit. But here's Lair number two going down. And that's painful. At least the Tunneling Claws upgrade, I guess, is going to finish up here. Unless he decides to target it immediately. But Terran's been pretty hesitant walking deep onto the creep. Okay, he does get close to the Roach Warren right now, but Tunneling Claws is finished. I guess he's going to be hunting for the Siege Tank there? It's the only thing that really makes sense. Yeah, that is what he's going for. Oh, we don't mind. We don't mind getting a good bit of damage in. He decides to pop underground once again. There is energy coming up in about 8 seconds, but those roaches are already out. Can we make some stuff? Did we just make another tech lab and then never used it? Why are we making so many tech labs, Kraken? Why are we not just making units? I don't quite understand. I don't think there's any reason. Roach is coming in from the site right now, but they'll be... Yeah, finding another planetary. My god. Tunneled roaches without Glio reconstitution are so slow. Ay, 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 ay. Alright, finally we're pumping out a few siege tanks. Finally we're making some marines. Zorgon, though, recognizes that there's really no way out for him. And he decides to GG out. But hats off to both of these players. That was, that was really fun.